Hello there and welcome back to another Thunders Productions video. I'm the madman behind the mic, Jag Thunder, and this is Minecraft. And what's up guys and welcome back to another short tutorial. This one is going to be on mooring lines. We're going to tie these ships up to the dock. Now I am guilty as charged. I got a lot of my ships here floating around and I never got back to tying them off to the docks. Uh, I've got this question several times in the past. Jag, how do you tie these things up? Uh, how close to the docks do you make them? And uh, we're going to go over some of those things in this tutorial. So there's some things that we need to know about mooring a ship to the dock. There are certain things on the ship that you're going to need and there's going to be certain things around the outside of your dock system uh, to tie the mooring lines down. Now usually I'm going to use either oak wood slabs or a wood slab for the older ships um, just for some rope. Uh, if I'm using a bigger battleship or uh, even a carrier uh, I might use either some cobblestone make it look like kind of like a chain or I'll use some quartz uh, because a lot of the ropes you know the newer ropes are a uh, kind of like a fiber rope and it's real real heavy and it's white looking so there's a few different materials that you can use uh, on the docks uh, these are usually called bollards and that's where you tie up the ropes on the docks <laughs> Now there's several different styles as you see here. I've just kind of wrapped it around the main corner uh, pieces here when my piers come up or my pier supports come up, uh, which was a good place to kind of tie that off. You can specifically make something on the dock a little further back. And toward the end of this tutorial, I'll go over and I'll show you my carriers and I'll kind of show you how I've got those tied up to the docks. Now on the ships themselves, there's a couple places to tie them down. You're going to have uh, a spot here in the front. And on the ships, uh, the bigger ships are usually called cleats, but basically they're in they're in a set of pair just like this here. And I didn't finish mine off, but what happens is the uh, the rope comes up and it weaves a figure eight in and out, and it takes up the excess slack on top of the deck. And then you'll have the same thing uh, down the side, usually back away from the uh, the side hole right here. And then you'll have another set down here. Now, again, I don't have mine fully detailed out, but there'd be another set right here. And uh, usually there's a forward headline up here and this keeps the forward part of the ship against the dock and there's usually fenders along the inside of the uh, the dock and the ship uh, some people call them bumpers and uh, I guess that's a little bit of a noob term but I guess the technical the technical term for those are fenders or uh, especially the big ships will have like a floating rubber barge uh, sitting in against the docks and again I'll show you my carriers kind of what I've got there uh, the Navy likes to use them for storing a lot of different things down there, especially when they're, you know, working on the uh, the hole when they're in dock and stuff like that, and just keeping a lot of the uh, materials and stuff off the main pier, um, just so it's out of the way for trucks transportation and reloading the ships and parts and services and stuff like that. There's a lot of different things that you can you can do some more research yourself, uh, but again, the, the main thing that we're looking at here is, uh, you know, the mooring lines going down to the dock. There's going to be one at the front called the headline. Usually there's a forward breast line right here and it keeps it close to the pier. And this is usually just about kind of straight at the ship. It might be back at an angle a little bit. And then you've got a forward spring line and mine in here is wrong. Um, and I, I just kind of threw this in and I realized it was wrong when I went right <laughs> when I got ready to make this tutorial. But it should be at an angle like this one here. And uh, that one there prevents it from advancing forward. All right, and then if it's a super long ship, they, there may be a couple more here in the middle, especially for like an aircraft carrier or something like that. Typically, there's usually about uh, at least at least six on a on a normal size ship here, and then you're going to have an uh, an aft spring line. And again, this one's at the wrong angle. I should have this one coming back to this baller right back here, at an angle, and then you'll have an aft breast line, which I don't have on this one here. Again, which is a tension line, and it'll be just about probably right about here on the ship and it'll be almost 90 degrees to the ship and then you'll have the last one here on the stern the stern line and this prevents the movement going forward and again this one should be a little bit more of an angle here going that way and it prevents the ship from moving forward so all the lines are uh, drawn tight or as, as tight as possible pulling against the fender against the uh, you know the bulkhead here or the side of the pier uh, as far as how do we get it to look like this? And usually is what I do is I will put a, I'm going to put a, uh, an aft breast line right here. And I'm just going to kind of give you an idea of what I do. I'm going to go from here up to, we're going to say, again, just about 90 degrees to the back. And we're going to say it right there. Now, if you have World Edit, it makes this a lot easier. Uh, if you don't, the easiest thing to do is just start going up at an angle until you figure out 
what you want. You want to get close, you're going to have to work the height, and you're going to have to work the angle and try to figure out how to get up here. Oh, and I already messed up. Go this way. And this is why I use blocks, just regular square blocks, until I get the shape of what I want with the line. And then once I've got this in, now this is what it would look like if it was if it was drawn tight. I'm going to go ahead and straighten that up just a little bit more, maybe put one more down here. And again, now that I've got a kind of a tight line, now I want to give it a little bit of a droop. Uh, so I'm going to add one more block back here, one here. Uh, probably drop this one down and this one down, and then this one and this one, and that one and this one right there. Okay, now I'm going to keep looking at it, kind of messing with it a little bit, figuring out how much droop I want. Usually there's some hanging down a little bit here, so I'm going to go ahead and drop that. And again, it's, it's going to look like overkill at first with the big blocks. But you know, once we start getting uh, the uh, the half slabs in, the better it will look. All right, something like this. All right, there we go. So we've got the basic shape. So it kind of droops off a little bit. And again, it's going to be very hard to get it completely straight. You don't want it to be completely straight and and tied off because there there is going to be some slack uh, in the line. So once you get that down, now you can start um, putting in your slabs and figure out how that's going to work through. So again, you're just going to kind of take the tops and get the basic shape, something like this. And this is going to connect in right here. So I don't want these top three here. I want to use the bottom hit box right here. All right, now I need to reach it up to there. So I'm going to go ahead and put one. <laughs> I'm going to put one right here. Just like that. And I might use a full block there. That might look all right. Again, you're just going to kind of mess with it and see what it looks like. You might add some blocks underneath here, kind of give it that little droop look, and then hit the bottom like this, and then keep your line a little bit thin in the middle, and it's gonna start working up this way. And again, I'm, I'm doing this quite fast. I would take a lot, a lot more time doing this, just like that. So you can kind of connect it in and mess around. This, this kind of looks a little funky here. So let's go ahead and add one more block right there. And we're going to go off the bottom hit box there. And maybe let's fix this one. Something like something like this. All right, that doesn't that doesn't look too bad. Again, just roughing it out, getting just getting it in there. You guys will be able to mess with it a little bit more. Again, you're going to take it through the side of your uh, your railing here if you want to, and then tie it around something. Now, again, as big as these blocks are, it's, it's going to look very, very junky uh, if you actually try to do a full bollard or a full, a full set of cleats and you wrap it in and out, in and out. Uh, it's going to take up a lot of space on your ship, and I, that's probably the biggest reason why I haven't done it on this one here. Um, again, just because it, it takes up too much room and it just it, it clutters it. But uh, that, that's pretty much what you do, and you're going to work each line the same exact way. You're going to put in the white blocks first or some kind of a, you know, just a holding block just to get the main angle, and then you're going to switch all the blocks over to, uh, to get the line in after you're done. And uh, that's pretty much it with the tutorial. We're going to jump over and look at um, uh, the aircraft carrier. If you're doing a submarine, again, you're going to have the same thing. Uh, so, I mean, nothing, nothing changes. You're going to use the same basic technique to tie down any kind of uh, ship to, uh, to a pier or a dock or something like that. Again, a yacht or one of your big ships, you know, like I've done here. We're going to go on the other side of the Missouri, and we're going to take a look at that one. All right, guys, we're going to take a look here. I don't have this one finished, so I don't have any support mooring lines here in the middle or any, any other spring lines. You'd kind of, if the, in the middle here, you could put a couple going, you know, different directions, you know, kind of pulling against each other. And the main idea is to keep it from moving forward, keep it moving backwards, and keep it against the dock. So the side bollards, uh, bollards this would be an idea, something you could use here. Again, you could finish wrapping the mooring line around that, or the mooring chain, whatever you're using. Same thing here, you could wrap it around. This is another just kind of a basic style, just like that. And again, that one's off a little bit. Could probably use a little bit more work on it. Uh, this 
Same with this one here. You've got the right angle going at it, uh, but I could go ahead and tidy it up here through the middle. Again, this was really fast, you know, putting this in, but you could spend a lot more time, but at least it looks a little more realistic. Let's go look at the carriers. All right, guys, so here are my carriers that I've got up here in my, uh, my main naval yard. Uh, but as you can see here, I've got a lot of the, the big mooring lines here uh, that come down onto the pier to a larger bollard. Uh, again, just another style. This kind of makes it look like it's uh, it's wrapping around it on this one. Probably should have differentiated with a, uh, a darker gray or something in between to uh, uh, so you could see between the rope and the bollard itself. Again, you could see up here. I've got another one, again, going that way. And this one here has to go up here to the front on the carrier because this is where uh, a lot of the forward mooring lines are stored. And then you've got another one down here going in and again just just some basic ideas there'll be some here in the middle sometimes right in here just again to hold it tight against the uh, the main uh, pier or the uh, the bulkhead so here's one on the, this fender right here or this large rubber floating dock that goes in between again this is kind of tied off to that and then the ship is pulled against this and again this makes another uh, working dock or deck next to the ship to do repairs and also to keep some of the equipment down on it. Sorry about the uh, shaders. They're a little bit bright <laughs> But anyways, uh, you can see the bollards by themselves So that you can see there's there's no ropes or mooring lines that uh, attached to those and then again here at the aft uh, You'll have several more Mooring lines again going into the back and you can look up different pictures and, and things like that of how uh and whatever ship that you're trying to tie down to your dock uh, you can find different pictures and use that for a reference and again back here to the front of that one so that's that's pretty much it guys I just want to give everybody a real quick idea of how to at least start your mooring lines uh, a little bit of basic information behind it you can go to the wiki again and give yourself some more knowledge if you uh, if you really want to be super realistic again I I use those six main points on my ship uh, on my ships and that's what I go by you can always add more lines um, but the bigger ships I, I wouldn't advise going any less than probably five or six lines um, as you've seen like I said on the uh, on the Texas over there I had five and that that would have been fine um, on the carriers you're, you're, you're gonna have like probably you know five to seven five to eight um, in Minecraft anyways in real life you're gonna have a lot more but if you put too many on it it's just it's gonna look cluttered it's gonna look shitty um, and I don't advise doing that. But other than that, guys, uh, like always, I appreciate you watching. Remember, rate, comment, subscribe. Follow me on Twitter. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Later.